Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be doing a front yard garden tour. It's the end of May. Um, this is the third in a series. The first was um, going ahead and preparing these beds. The second was planting up the evergreens and perennials that are in this bed. And then this is the third and final, which is just a garden tour of my new bed and the rest of my yard, which looks amazing right now. Everything is in bloom. So I am so glad you joined me today and I hope you'll stay tuned. All right guys, I'm gonna try to get going with this front yard tour before the sun starts beaming down on me. Um, so I'll go through each area and just show you some of the things in bloom. Beautiful salvias, my begonias. I did a show on these a while back. Another gorgeous salvia that has been performing beautifully. It's a pretty time of year with everything in bloom. Cat mint. And my two drift roses back here are not in bloom right now. All right, well, we have the wave petunia and the super petunia. They're all filling in nicely. Now the waves are bigger, but they did get a head start. Um, and then we've got this lemon coral sedum that's popping up. I dug it all out and transplanted it all over there in front of the Japanese maple. I thought that contrast would be really pretty but it's still popping up everywhere. So I'm just moving it about, but yeah, it's filling in nicely over here. And then I've got sunshine ligustrums in the back there, some gumfrinas all mixed in here. And then my limelight standard is starting to get some buds. I'm super excited about this. I am hoping for a good year in this pot and um, yeah, I feel like I can maybe control its environment a little bit better. And then as we step back, we see a side view. Um, my holly tree is getting huge. Um, we had to trim it up. So between the oak and the holly, we're getting a little more shade than we have in the past on this side of the bed. So, and we lucked out. We've got a beautiful magnolia in bloom. Oh my goodness, if you guys could smell this. It's so heavenly. This whole side of my yard smells like magnolia. The only benefit to a magnolia tree is the smell. And then I've got some gumfrinas also in this bed, pretty much to take up the height behind the petunias. I've got some gorgeous gold celosia kind of popping through every now and then. Um, let's see, so I do have those um, just kind of throughout. As the petunias fill in, I'm thinking those gold celosias are gonna pop up beautifully. That right there is my grass that I transplanted from my drift rose bed. And I think it's gonna be very happy here. That is one petunia, guys, one petunia. My pink skull cap is starting to come into bloom. I did cut my, these are all below a really huge holly here. See my holly? which I did trim just to kind of get some more sun down here. So I'm hoping that helps my skull cap come into bloom. And then I've got some Rhea salvia. It's an annual, it's supposed to be an annual, but it does come back for me. Um, some of it comes back. I did, these are all new, but I have one on the other side. I'll get to it that comes back every year. And then I have some white queen caladiums that are starting to pop in that I put all up in here and I forgot I had those. I had gotten them at Costco and a good deal. Oh, my gorgeous Dianthus. So same on this side. This is the salvia that comes back for me every year. And I'm pretty sure it's the same. It's that Rhea salvia. Some more caladiums, they're starting to pop up. My Carex is doing amazing. Okay, so in this bed, you can see I have, I don't wanna step on my caladium, so I'll just go around, but again, I just repeat the petunias, and then um, my bubble gums are kinda getting lost in there, so I do think I wanna trim away some of these tidal 
waves and let the bubble gum shine through. I just want to show you the color variation in these, how pretty. This is one petunia, and I love all the different colors that come out of it. So behind that, I have, towards the back of the bed, I have the gumfrina, but then I have all of my florette florals. These are the spun sugar celosias coming in. And I have them coming in throughout the bed, and they are coming in in such a variety of gorgeous shades of soft pinks and oranges. Not pretty. All right, and then my liatris are all just towering over. They're gonna be gorgeous. That is a yellow knockout back there. Let me get back there. Some of the soft vanilla blooms. And then look at the color of the foliage. I, guys, I just think another holy grail or perfect storm. I don't know which one. So I have two of each in the front and the back. And I think this is supposed to be perfect storm, but I'll see when it comes into bloom. So they're either two holy grails or two perfect storms. And I think these are the perfect storms and the holy grails are the back, but the buds are just about to explode everywhere. I'm so excited about this. And then my flamingo phlox is about to start puckering out. So as soon as this puckers out, the liatris does take over. And I love that because I do love height in the bed. I just think that looks so fantastic. And, and I've got, let me, before I start showing you the new bed, show you the hosta that I tucked away. Look how gorgeous. Let me get back back here and show you from this side. All hidden away back here. Bunch of secret little hostas. I love the way this Japanese maple looks with the morning sun. And then my two dahlias right here. Um, small little flowers, but this one's getting eaten up by something. I'll have to figure that out. If y'all know, let me know. I haven't really seen anything on it, but I've been checking. And then this is the only cone flower that lived through my, our hot summer last year. This is a beautiful golden yellow cone flower. And I was wanting it to kind of take over the color of the daisies back here. So after the daisies were out of bloom, the cone flowers would take over, but no luck. I think I'll eventually be able to divide these though. All right, let's come around. Come back out of the bed to see how beautiful this Joel Cherry Phlox turned out to be. Look at the color. And then look next to the Dusty Miller, how beautiful. All right, so since I'm here, let's just come around and look at the, take a good look at the purple verbena. And I do have a lot of very vibrant colors in this bed. I felt like I just really wanted them to pop so you could see them from the street. Um, I, a couple of coleus seed, reseeded, so that was exciting. I'm hoping that they're the same one. I had two different types of coleuses last year, so my fingers are crossed that I don't have one of each. That won't look that great, but um, oh. my amazing daisies are showing beautiful color. The actress is coming in. My drift roses have gone crazy. This is their second flush of just pure, beautiful white mounds of cotton. My Lysianthus. And then just at the base of my tree, I just have some scavoli and begonias kind of mixed together. It's a pretty combination. I love the pinks and blues. And again, my flowers. 
Yes, that's pink, so it's supposed to be white, and there's lots of pink poking through, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Here's my gorgeous maiden hair, and then let me show you a view of that. Let's see if I can get my shadow out of the way. So chrysanthemums here, Leatris coming in beautifully. Hot pink salvia, which is, I had cut it back after I did my last episode. I cut it just so that it would give a nice even flush and they're starting to sprout up. I should not ignore my gorgeous Gara that's about to come in. So since it's been transplanted, I cut it back. I did not want to risk um, any type of difficulty with transplant. So there's the bud on my new rose. Well, it's not new, it's old, but newly transplanted rose. And then look at all my Mystic Spires has come into bloom beautifully. And this is Magellan Zinnias, and I have these planted throughout here. I thought it'd be so pretty mixed in with the salvias. See one of the hostas poking in. Let's see if I can get out of the sun. All right, so I have hummingbird mint there. These are um, more mystic spires, and I believe I have these are all um, cone flowers, echinacea pu purea, I think. It's like a soft pinkish purple. And then I do think I have some cherry brandy. Rebecca here. Uh, I did line this bed with zinnias. And I had a question from a user about pill bugs because yes, they're a happy bug and they're usually a good bug in small amounts, but in large amounts, this is what starts happening. They will eat your plants, guys. When you have a lot of them, can you see them all over my zinnias? They will go for it. When there's not enough decaying matter in food, they are gonna eat your plants, so. They're hungry and they don't care if it's dead or alive so my juniper and then the two lantana this is lantana irene and again just so pretty all right and then we'll just come through here we're looking very pretty everything my balloon flowers a couple of them are about to open i love the way that looks is that so cute what's well, called balloon more zinnias double play doozy spirea has some blooms and i don't know if you know but if you want to come and cut your spirea after the bloom you'll get more so I may come in and do that. Um, just more balloon flowers. I put some Henry Dilbert salvia back here. Have some canna lilies coming up. And then this is the last of the pink oak leaves because they're starting to crisp, which you can see here. It's just, we got up to 97 yesterday. Uh, it's a bicolor salvia here. All right, and then this is a rose that I transplanted from the back. I have a show, an episode coming up, but oh good, this is good to see. I see some new growth, lots of new growth. So it's gonna be happy here, I think. And uh, you guys can watch for that episode. And then my, um, Lower petulum's looking beautiful. It's trimmed kind of funky, isn't it, guys? I just realized how funky it's like. I don't know what kind of shape that is. I might have to work on that. So up here is my crepe myrtle and Natchez crepe myrtle. And then my Claire's. I have trimmed this little trees here. So let's come back around. And all together, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm 
So over here off the driveway, I just have, I left my ornamental cabbage because look how pretty it looks with the begonias, just beautiful. Some snapdragons are still in bloom. And then my Japanese maple. And I've got lots of daylilies coming in on a daily basis, but I think I'm gonna have to move these because they're just, I think, maybe getting way too much shade now. They're underneath this huge oak tree that has just gotten massive over the last few years. So all this area, these are all, um, I have here behind my Nandinas, I have, um, oh my gosh, what are they? I'm drawing a blank. You know, the Christmas flower. Come on guys, okay. Well, so I have day lilies here in the middle and then the Christmas, Christmas flower. Whoa, it'll come to me uh, on either side of it, so. Okay, well that's it guys. As always, you guys have an amazing day. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.